If you are able, please rise for the reading of God's word. Scripture reading this morning comes from Ephesians 2, chapter 2, verses 12 through 22. Remember that at that time you were separate from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel and foreigners to the covenants of the promise, without hope and without God in the world. But now in Jesus Christ, Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made the two groups one and destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility, by setting aside in his flesh the law with its commands and regulations. His purpose was to create in himself one new humanity out of two, thus making peace and in one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross by which he put to death their hostility. He came and preached peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. For through him, we both have access to the Father by one spirit. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple of, in the Lord. And in him, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. Our gospel lesson this morning is from Luke chapter four, verses 16 through 19. He went to Nazareth where he had been brought up and on the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue as was his custom. He stood up to read and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. May God bless the reading, hearing, and understanding of his word. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you, Randy. Well, good morning. I encourage you, uh, as, I, as I usually do, to have your bulletins handy, because in your bulletins you will find uh, spaces to take notes. So when the Spirit speaks to you this morning, you can write down those those nudges, those urges that, that Christ puts in your heart this morning. There are also questions in Scripture that you can reflect on and read throughout the week, and so I encourage you to, to constantly dive into Scripture. Spend your 15 minutes alone with God in reading those passages and reflecting on the question and what it means for you. And finally, that during this time, if there is a moment that a question arises in your head, don't be afraid to text it to me. My number is in the bulletin. You can text the question to me. Like last week, I was able to, able to address a question that came in. Uh, not guaranteeing that I'll be able to do that, but I would certainly love to hear your questions. And, and if I didn't get to it today, then I will certainly get to it this week. Uh, so will you pray with me? Gracious and loving God, we, we pause to hear your word and to, and to hear your message. And so God, I ask that the words that I speak... The words would no longer be my own, but that they would be your words, your message for your people. Open up our hearts and our minds to hear you today. In Jesus' name, amen. So I, I know I shouldn't feel this, but there are times when I am absolutely blown away, absolutely blown away by how God is able to work in and through worship services. Who would have thought that our song today would have such meaning for us in the light of this past week? Of course, God knew. 
God always knows. God worked through the person who lifted the name of this song as one of those ones that we wanted to study during this particular worship series. And God also worked through me as I placed the song in the middle of this three-week series. And while I moved this series around a couple of times on, on the overall calendar, it happened to fall right here. God works in all things. So today, as we continue on our Journey in the Key of series, we focus on music and the language that it speaks directly, directly to our hearts. Sometimes words are enough, whether they're spoken in a message, written in a book, or maybe a, a beautiful poem. But when music is added, it seems like they take on a whole new meaning and bring us to a completely different level of emotion, and of understanding. Not sure if you did or not, but I recently watched Carrie Underwood's performance and the Country Music Association Awards where she shared a medley of hymns within a beautiful duet with C.C. Winans. As they shared with their wonderful voices and, and the choir behind them, emotions flooded my soul. These were familiar hymns, including How Great Thou Art, which we spoke about last week. But they seemed new and powerful and deeply spiritual. Music has this incredible passion that is conveyed to all who hear and experience it. I remember uh, one time I went to a, uh, to a show at the Coronado Theater in Rockford. I went to La Boheme. And for those of you who don't quite know what the La Bohème is, it's this beautiful opera. And as I listened to one of the arias, and even though I had no idea what the words meant, <laughs> these words in Italian and the music and the vocalist conveyed a meaning so deep and so passionate that it brought me to tears. Afterward, I thought it was quite strange to be crying over something I, I couldn't intellectually understand, but the music spoke directly to my soul. I wonder what those songs are for you. I'm sure you probably all have some in mind. We talked a little bit about this the first week. So I want maybe to you to, to bring one of those songs to mind, one of those songs that have such a deep meaning for you. And reflect on that for just a second. On why that song is so important to you. Is there a memory connected to it? A certain time of your life? Is it a conversation that you had with somebody just before or just after? What is it that makes that song so incredibly important to you? Carry that with you. Carry that reflection with you today. So, so today, we, as we're looking at the origins of, of hymns and songs, we turn our attention to an anthem for world peace. Written by Jill Jackson and Cy Miller, Let There Be Peace on Earth is one of those songs that you know by heart. And it has this beautiful natural crescendo and decrescendo built right into the song it's almost like you don't have to draw the dynamics in. Everybody knows where this song is going. It's a song full of emotion, full of conviction, but ultimately it is a call to peace. It's an anthem of love, of kindness, grace, and mercy. Sometimes I think it's, it's like another song that comes to mind when I think about these types of songs. It's, it's one I think you might know. I'd like to teach the world to sing in perfect harmony. I'd like to hold it in my arms and keep it company. Or maybe you remember it as, I'd like to buy the world a Coke. <laughs> As I was preparing for this message, I, I kept thinking that the writers were, were well before their time. I mean, this song would have fit perfectly 
within the protest songs of the 1960s as people were asking for peace and not war. However, the song was written and published in 1955. Jill Jackson, one of the, the co-writers, was once interviewed about her, this song and, and kind of how this thing all came about, and she said that it began in 1944 when she found herself in circumstances which had her questioning not only the love of God, but also the humanity which was all around her. She felt hopeless and possibly helpless, so much so that she attempted suicide. She felt like this world was not a place that, that she wanted to be in and felt that it better that she didn't live in it. Here's what Jill said in this interview. She said this, When I attempted suicide in 1944 and I didn't succeed, I knew for the first time unconditional love, which God is. You are totally loved, totally accepted, just the way you are. And in that moment, I was not allowed to die. And something happened to me, which is very difficult to explain. I had an, an eternal moment of truth in which I knew I was loved and I knew I was here for a purpose. You see, through the circumstances of her attempt and, and following failure to take her own life, Jill found a peace that she had been searching for and didn't know it. This peace came through the knowledge of God's unconditional love. This is the agape love of God. It is a love that tells us that God loves us and there is nothing we can do about it. Jill sees this moment as, as the catalyst of the song, even if it wasn't fully written and published until 1955. No doubt the end of the Second World War had a major part in, in writing as the war ended only a year after Jill's attempt at suicide. But what could bring this project to completion? I mean, two events, as you study the, the history, two events come to mind in 1955. The beginning of the Vietnam War and the killing of Emmett Till, a 14-year-old African-American who was lynched after he was accused of offending a white woman in a grocery store. I guess we could say that, that either event would be enough to inspire a song about peace, about world peace. The United States was not experiencing peace across the globe at that time. And we certainly weren't feeling peace within our borders either. Well, the song got its start as all of this was going on in the strangest of places. Cy Miller, Jill's husband and co-writer of the song, tells of the song's beginnings. They had written the song and decided to introduce it to a group of 180 teenagers while on a retreat in the mountains. His group represented the world. The kids were from different ethnic backgrounds, different religions, different social and economic statuses. The group was as, as diverse as any at that time, especially thinking about the social climate of the 1950s and, and segregation. I can only imagine how this group would have looked to the world around them. Regardless, toward the end of the retreat, Jill and Sai had the teenagers gather around in a huge circle and link arms and taught them this song. Can you imagine the sight, the sound? How emotional would this moment in time have been? All different kinds of people standing in a circle and singing a song about wanting peace about walking side by side, living in harmony. They were making a vow here in this song to, to live in peace with each other, and I can only dream that their desire was to have this movement of peace begin with them. You see, the retreat ended, 
And the kids all came down off of that mountain. But they didn't leave without being changed. They shared this song with everyone that they knew, and and the word began to spread about this song. And it didn't take long for the song to gain notoriety and to be accepted in so many different circles. I mean, if I think about this, I I, I decided to do some search and find out, okay, who who were some of the the famous people that performed this song in some of the the big areas? So some of the people who have been known to perform it are like Placido Domingo, Mahalia Jackson, Pat Boone, Johnny Mathis, and Tennessee Ernie Ford. If that isn't a diverse group, I don't know what is. (laughs) The song also won a George Washington Honor Medal for outstanding achievement in helping to bring out a better understanding of the American way of life. Not really sure how they got that all on the plaque. But how amazing. And now, as of 2009, it's now become a children's book, which actually reminds me of another book, Wish Tree. (laughs) Maybe you remember this one. Journey of Hope partnered with with Creekside Elementary to provide books to all the students in their, their one school, one book program. Prior to our involvement, I picked up a copy and and read it to see what it was all about. And it's a beautiful story about acceptance in the face of diversity and how we can be people who stand in the gap, protecting others from racism, discrimination, and plain old hateful actions. Kind of sounds like a, an upcoming sermon series. Maybe one that we call Stone Catchers. <laughs> but you'll have to wait a couple of weeks for that one. This is such a wonderful thing to participate in. And I just wanted to share a thought from one of the students when they were asked about the book. The child wrote this. All everyone really wants in this life is to be treated equally. Have people around them that they can trust and call friends and feel loved and accepted by all. If they can have all that, then maybe people will learn to dissolve their hate towards people who are different than them and let it blossom into a whole new life, a new world. Out of the mouths of children. Children in this community. Doesn't that sound like the message in the song? Let there be peace on earth. And so let me say that that this was only possible because of the generosity of all of us here of this gathering of people. It was because of Journey of Hope that the story reached so many kids in our community. It was because of all of you. Now, we're still looking at ways of continuing this relationship with Creekside as well as Highland Elementary and K-Motion to be a part of our community, to be involved in our community, to bring peace to our community. You see, this is actually kind of what the passage in Ephesians is telling us this morning, that we are no longer strangers or aliens, but brothers and sisters in Christ, all members of the household of God. That doesn't mean just this church. And while we, can do, we do consider ourselves a family here at Journey of Hope, we also belong to the wider church, the church universal, God's church. We are, as Paul writes, the body of Christ, joined together, growing together. This is a view of God's kingdom. And I think it's also a view that our song today shares, walking together, side by side, joining together in perfect harmony, living in peace. And not just peace as we might understand it from from maybe a world's perspective of of the absence of conflict but true peace. True peace. Jesus tells his disciples in in John 14, 27, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give as the world gives. Peace on earth. Not our peace, but the peace that Jesus gives. That should be our goal. But we also need to remember 
that it begins with us. We make decisions every day to love or to hate. We decide if we're going to live in peace with others or disrupt the apple cart. These decisions are ours. We can all probably think of someone who likes to to blame situations on anything, I mean anything, but themselves. But when we really get to the bottom of it, it all starts with us, and we have the power and the liberty to make the decisions, to make the right decisions. For those of us who are married or are in a relationship with a significant other, we make the decision to love each and every day. Some days it's easy. Some days it's not so easy. But we make the decision to love each day. Why can't this be true in every aspect of our lives? So while we can think of the song about about world peace, especially as it pertains to, to warring nations, I think we really need to look a little closer to home. Yes, Jill and Cy wrote this song initially talking about the kind of that this kind of peace, but there is a deeper truth to be found. Jesus quotes a passage from Isaiah when he was beginning his ministry, and we heard it as Randy read it for us this morning out of the Gospel of Luke, quoting Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty all those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. We must remember that we are called to do the same. We are asked to live a Christ-like life, and that means all of what Jesus is saying. Jesus told us to feed the poor, to clothe the naked, to heal the sick, to visit the prisoner. Sometimes we feel like the righteous that Jesus mentions when we say that, that we don't know who the poor, sick, naked, or imprisoned are. But it doesn't take us long to look around and truly see the state of our community, of our nation, and of our world. We live in a world full of unrest, full of non-peace. And frankly, that's not God's design. There is anger, there's hatred, racism, discrimination, and apathy that we are surrounded by and is not, that is not what the kingdom of God looks like. The kingdom is love, hope, grace, and peace. This is what we strive for. I mean, violence is on our streets, addictions, homelessness, and the sheer lack of human kindness. We see all this, and it's enough to make you scream at times. We shout to God about why all of this exists. Why is it even here, God? We ask God to intervene and to heal our land, to to mend our relationships and bring about God's kingdom right here on earth as it is in heaven. And then we wait. The problem with that is that God asks us to be the hands and feet of Jesus in our world. We are to reflect the light of God into our neighborhoods, among our friends, and even in the midst of our enemies. The peace that that seems to elude us is right in front of us. We just need to recognize it and participate in it. Paul writes to the church in Rome, live in harmony with one another. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. With God, our Creator, children all are we. Let us walk with each other in perfect harmony. Please notice how Paul expresses this. If possible, so far as it depends on you. Peace, as I said before, is a decision that we make just as it is to make a decision to not live in peace. 
But remember that it is our decision. We can't force someone else to make that same decision. We can encourage. We can live by example. As far as it depends on you. Is the phrase that tells us to do whatever we can to live in peace. Whatever you can to live in peace. But we also need to understand that when it doesn't work, when the divide is just too far apart. Many of you know how things work in a particular Sunday school class. <laughs> Mary Van Slyke's Sunday school class here on Sunday mornings are actually still on Zoom, right? Uh, people join in that class with very different political and theological beliefs but yet they seem to have civil conversations, respecting each other. This is living in peace with one another. And everyone in that group makes, makes a decision to respect the space, to respect the peace. What would this world look like if we too could respect the space and live in peace with one another? I dare say that this world could look a whole lot different. The church is a movement, not an institution. And all movements begin small. Think of Jesus and his bag of, of ragamuffins, a small group forming a movement and influencing the entire world. And this is the same way we can see this song. We long for peace in our world, and that is the start of a much bigger movement. But it starts small, kind of like that mustard seed. Let there be peace on earth. God's peace. God's mercy. God's justice. God's love. And God's grace. And let it begin with all of you. Let us begin this movement here and take it outside so that people see the way we live and say, I want that. I want to live in peace. And those people at Journey of Hope, they kind of understand it. They know what it's all about. And so I want to pay attention to that. And I want to grow in my faith. And I want to come belong to that family. Will you pray with me? Gracious God. God, sometimes we hear messages that are, that are easy. And then we hear messages that, that challenge us. That maybe push us outside of our comfort zones. That maybe tell us that we need to do something that we really don't want to. God, you never said that, that this Christian life was going to be easy. But you did say that you would walk with us. And so God, give us the strength. Give us the courage. And give us the wisdom to, to take this journey with you. This journey of hope. And allow us to be your light into this world that we may shine a light of peace. But God, in order to do that, we need your Spirit. We need your Spirit to fall upon us and to, and to be with us every moment of every day and to guide our steps. And so please, God, do not withhold your Spirit. Fill us with your Spirit. All this I ask in Jesus' name. Amen.